Hello, First Church. My name is Karen richards Quan, and I'm so grateful to be with you today for today's Monday devotional. A few weeks back, one of our friends hosted a plant swap. Now, a plant swap is where all manner of folks will come together bringing their leaf cuttings, their seedlings, and they'll swap them out so that other folks can grow unique plants of their own. Now, Paul and I weren't able to move any of our plants with us when we, when we moved up to Portland. And so our friend invited us to come empty handed and invited us to walk away with all manner of seedling and leaf cutting. I have here just some of those, uh, some of those leaves, some of those seeds that they gave us for propagation. And some of them are doing better than others. <laughs> These here, most of them are ready actually for soil. We started them in water so that they could grow some roots. Um, and some of them are quite ready for soil. This one here has been in water probably a little too long. You can see um, just quite how root rich it is. And so this one, uh, this one will take a little bit longer probably to get used to the soil and it'll probably need closer attention with really high moisture levels uh, because it it's just really used to growing in the water. But the plant cuttings that grow in water will never quite mature enough as, as the ones that actually are in a nutrient rich soil. This one here uh, has been somewhat neglected. <laughs> and so this will need a little extra love as well. Now, plant cuttings and seedlings, these are sort of gifts from their mother plants. They're just uh, cuttings off of mature plants that are able then to take root and become mature plants of their own. As I've been thinking about uh, preparing to put some of these into soil this week, I am also thinking a lot about how this this pattern of nurturing these plants has so much in common with nurturing generosity. Now, Stewardship Month is, is coming up upon us, and so that may be how I draw this comparison. But I find that my own generosity is so much like these little seedlings that were nurtured from a more mature mother plant. Generosity was first shown to me by my parents who were as generous and uh, gave as good of an example as they knew how by mentors and friends and family who made sure that I was fed, who made sure I had a place to sleep, who made sure that I was nurtured and cared for, from congregations um, around the nation who provided financially for my education and for my continued growth in ministry, and of course from God who gave me the capacity and the framework, the capability to be all that I am, to breathe, to live, um, all that I have become. All of these examples of generosity have enabled me to come from a little, little leaf cutting, a little seedling, and to grow in my own generosity, my generosity of my compassion, my time, my finances. Now, with generosity, uh, sometimes we, we don't nurture it quite, quite enough. And that doesn't just mean that you're not giving or you're not um, increasing your gift, but there's a lot of spiritual work that goes into generosity. To me, giving is not an obligation. Um, it's certainly not something that should happen out of guilt, but it's an opportunity that comes as a result of our discipleship. And it's, it's not only a result of our discipleship, it's a part of it. The opportunity to be generous is something that is, uh, it's, it's within our bones. It's part of our very being. It's something that can cause great joy and great celebration. And this poor plant, um, it needs it needs some discipleship, but it is not lost. It just needs some intentional care. Uh, and like this one here, uh, this one is is growing tons of roots, and it's going to be hard for it to adjust. So this is like if I am used to giving ten dollars a week, and that's just that has been my faithful rhythm for quite a bit of time and I've decided I'd like to start giving $60 a month or say if I had been giving 10% of my income that's a full tithe it's an incredible gift an incredible mark of discipleship if I'm used to doing that and I decide that I'd like to start giving 12% of my income to account for the cost of living increases that the church will have to incur um, 
to account for inflation, it's going to take some adjustment. And I'm going to have to check in with myself and my budget often to make sure that I've recalibrated to that. That's just like this heavily <laughs> water-rooted plant uh, that I'll be moving to soil soon. Now, the, the one factor, of course, that I haven't mentioned in full that these two have in common, these little seedlings, these little uh, root growing plants and our generosity is that a huge portion of this, it's not us. Uh, it is the work of God. Our creator is the one who gives us the capacity for growth, the capacity for generosity. And it's the spirit that guides us through this. So as we continue this month talking about our generosity and really celebrating the impact of your generosity, I look forward to hearing what inspires you to give. I'm grateful to be serving a congregation who are generous with their time, with their compassion, who are generous with their joy, and yes, who are generous with their financial gifts. As we continue along our sermon series called uh, We're Just Getting Started, we're really going to be celebrating the generosity of the last 175 years and dreaming about the generosity of the next 175 years. Until then, First Church, I look forward to seeing you.